You are listening to Single Smart Female. This is us letting it all hang out about your love life, examining Steph's dating experiences, and answering your hot topic dating questions. Just you, Steph, and me. No topic is off limits and no filters involved. This is Jen. And I'm Steph. If you have a question about your love life that you would like us to answer, you can submit your question at singlesmartfemale.com. Welcome to show number seven of Single Smart Female. I'm Jen and I'm joined by my gorgeous co-host, Steph. Thank you, Jen. We are going to jump straight into our question of the day, our submission from singlesmartfemale.com and answer a question to a really lovely lady out in Tennessee. We'll call her Tennessee Hottie. Her question for us is, and then we'll go into a, a few details. She says, I've been talking off and on with this man for two years now. I made the mistake of completely disappearing on him about a year and a half ago as we'd been communicating through the dating site I was on and I deleted my account partially because I was frustrated with him and it. We reconnected this past summer and at first it was texting day and night. Then we went out and he pulled back a bit. Then we got on track again. We're both very shy and I think this is important to know. We met up a couple of weeks ago. And he didn't pull back as much, but still just a little last week when we were texting and I told him I had a story to tell him, but he never responded. So I never did tell him the story. This Saturday, I had a date and he happened to come in to the same place I was with my date. Mm -hmm. I only caught a couple of glances of him as my heart was beating in my throat, but he was sitting right behind us and facing us. So I know he had to have seen me with this man. I steered my day out of there to go get coffee as soon as I could. Now it's been a week and that's the longest we've gone without communicating. And I don't know if I should text him about this or not. I know it's one thing to know that somebody else is dating and quite another to see it, but I'm scared this could kill any attraction. I've been patient all week, but now it's really starting to eat at me. What should I do? I really do like this guy, but there are definite walls that neither of us can seem to break down. So for our Tennessee hottie, a couple things to note. Again, I mentioned already she is 38. She wanted us to know that she is looking for something healthier than a casual relationship. And she is focused on one man right now, but she's also uh, uh, dating others, which by the way, is a woman after my own heart because she is actively mantourage dating, which is dating more than one man at a time until you meet your forever man or indefinitely if you so choose. Steph, do you want to start? Love to. Okay, Miss Tennessee Hattie. I do find it interesting that You are concerned that you may have killed the attraction by him seeing you out with another man. We do never advise you to tell people about your or tell the men that you're dating about the other men that you're dating. But if he happened to stumble into the same place that you were on your date, I actually find that quite amusing. He may would he's more likely to start thinking about you more knowing that you're not going to be there for him waiting around for him so it might encourage him to get on the ball with you and start pursuing you a little bit more than he has been as of recent she did mention though she hasn't heard from him in a week so i will i agree with steph i 100 percent agree that it can benefit you for a man to see you with another man but he also, it since this guy has a, and you did say he was shy, and you made an important note about that, you did say he was shy and that he has pulled back in the past, there is the possibility, and it sounds like he's doing a bit of a pullback right now, which is what we call a man pause, which is where a man takes the time to consider whether or not you guys do have the potential of a future relationship. And when you're when he's in that man pause, it's very important to not over communicate with them, which obviously you're a woman after my own heart. Again, you haven't done that. You have kind of let him be with his thoughts. So 
The question is, since he is in some kind of pause, which he might be thinking, you know what, I lost. That's, that's a very big possibility if he saw you on a date with another guy. But it, although it might make him think about you more and want you more, and he might very well come around, I think in this case, it, it might be okay to send him a message, not necessarily in reference to him seeing you like that. But I think it's great in, in situations like that to wait you know, a few days and say, hey, send him a message. Hey, how are you doing? Send him something fun and playful, something that would give him permission almost to start communicating with you again and see where he takes it from there. Any thoughts on that, Steph? Yeah, I think that's great advice. He may be, like Jen said, you mentioned that he was shy. He may be a little bit concerned that he lost his shot. So if you just give him that little, hey, you know, I'm still interested in you nudge without, you know, being too overly pushy about it. Just be fun and playful and have a good time. And you don't have to over explain it either. Please don't go into, I know you saw me with this man, but this doesn't mean this, this and this. Because he doesn't, he's not your boyfriend at this moment. He doesn't merit that explanation right now. And I, not that he's not a great guy. So let me make sure I, that I explain that there's a difference here. There's no, um, I'm not saying he's not worth it, but when you're not in an exclusive relationship with someone, you do not need to explain everything that you are doing in your life. Now, if he comes to you and says, hey, I saw you with this other guy, what does that mean? You can at that point tell him, you know what, I was on a date. I really enjoy my time with you. I'd like to see where it goes with you. But at the same time, I don't want to put all of my eggs in your basket when you haven't made it clear to me that you want an exclusive relationship. Yeah. The By the way, just so you know, my husband's from Tennessee. So I, I love the people in Tennessee. You, you guys do some great things in Tennessee and have some beautiful places to go. And I love your accent. It's so sexy. Okay, Tennessee hottie, there's something that I would like you to do. Now, Steph mentioned that there's not really a problem and it actually can benefit you if he sees you on a date with another man. And I do agree with her. That definitely can work in your favor. But I don't want you to strive for this or other single women out there to ever strive for this and use this as it be, because at that point it becomes a manipulation tactic. And we don't do manipulation here on Single Smart Female ever. That's not our intention. We want you to be adored women because you're irresistible, not because you're manipulative. And you can easily do that. So one of the things I want to suggest and when you have a mantraage is to not take men that you're dating to the places that you frequent. So do not take men that you are dating to the places that you frequent. Because what happens is these men end up going there and looking for you and sometimes at the same time. I have had this happen with several clients in the past. And it's very important to note that it can be a a very uncomfortable situation for all parties involved. It is not something that you want to orchestrate and make happen. If it happens to happen, then so be it. It was meant to be. But if you're orchestrating it, that doesn't mean it's meant to be. It's you trying to manipulate outcomes, and that never works in your favor long term. Sometimes short term, but never ever long term. So what I'd like you to do for some homework is actually, and I have my clients do this as well, is put together a list of places you'd like to go on first, second, and third date. So you can even kind of tier them. For instance, if you're just meeting somebody for the first time, different places you'd like to go. If you guys have a great connection and it's moving on, where's the second? What's the second tier? Where's the second place that you'd like to go? Here's the thing. Men are going to ask you what you would like to do on a date. And it's not because they're not creative at all, although there are some in that way. It's because they really want the opportunity to do something that excites you, makes you happy, and um, 
gives you the two the most potential for a great time to get to know each other. So take that opportunity and don't ever say, well, whatever you want to do, because you're missing out on a big opportunity. And circling back to the different thing, dates thing, if you have a list of you can pull from, then you won't be stumped when this question comes up. Because as you mantourage date more and more, this question will start to come up more and more because men are going to be able to feel what a high value woman you are and that you have many options and you never, ever have to even tell them about these options. So I want you to make sure you have a list, something fun to put together. You can put it in three tiers if you want, two tiers. You can just start start off with starter dates. They don't have to be super expensive. They can be more expensive because you are worth it as well. But put the list together so that you have it with you. And if you're asked, where do you want to go? You can give him something. You're going to give him clues on how he can learn to love, cherish, and adore you over time. Plus, you're going to start out the potential for a relationship and the potential for great chemistry in a much different way. Yeah. Jen, let me interject on that one. When it comes to making your list, I I find it very helpful to consider your moods and kind of create a few different pieces. Oh, that's really good stuff. Yeah. Because like there are some days where I just really need to get outside or I want to do an activity. And then there are other days where I'm just not really, I want to do something a lot more low key. And if you can kind of come up with dates that kind of sit around your mood, then you can adjust accordingly or basically choose something that's going to be the most enjoyable for you at that time. Because we know as women, our moods do shift throughout Yes. And we definitely don't want you because you don't know what to come up with just going to your your default places that that you frequent all the time as as a single woman. Again, we don't want these all these guys showing up at the same time looking for you because it will happen at some point if you keep doing that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Tennessee hottie. I honestly believe that this does not have to be the end of everything, but I do encourage you to keep dating, to send him a fun text message, just skirting the issue for now. And if he brings it up directly, then you can address him directly about it. Otherwise, just send him a message. It's okay to connect with a man first. There's nothing wrong with that, so long as it's not only you doing that. Today's episode is brought to you by Make Him Want You Again online class. If you would like to learn exactly what to do, say, or text to make yourself irresistible and unforgettable in his mind, meet us over at MakeHimWantYouAgain.com. Hey, lover girl, it's that time where we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects. I'm not quite sure why it's my favorite subject, but we're going to talk about Steph's love life. Love life. My love life is my favorite subject too. (laughs) (laughs) Tell us, tell us all what's been going on your love life, Steph. Okay. Well, um, I think the last time we talked, I was kind of explaining how my Latin lover is planning a move. Um, fairly shortly here. Details are still kind of up in the air (laughs) as well as everything surrounding that still kind of up in the air. But we have been spending a lot of time together, you know, kind of trying to, I guess, take advantage of the time before it goes. Exactly. Exactly. I can understand that. Yeah. But basically what's, what's been happening the past couple of weeks is things have felt a little bit off, at least from my perspective. And I couldn't really put my finger on why. I just, I was like, oh man, what is going on? This really sucks because everything feels kind of funky and I don't want it to be funky right before he leaves. And I've got all these, you know, ideas in my head about what that's going to be like. Did you ask him about it? Uh-huh. <laughs> I did. I actually, I said, we we got into a little bit of a tiff 
at dinner one night. And then I was like, you know, I just feel like things have been off lately. And and he goes, what, like tonight? Yeah. I was like, no, I mean, just in general, the last few times that we've been in, I said, do you know what I mean? And he said, no. (laughs) He just flat out (laughs) told you no. Yeah. No. Uh, maybe it's just me then. Okay. Um. Anyways, moving on, <laughs> which is basically kind of what I did. I said, okay, I guess it's me. And then I just changed the subject, uh, which is a neat little trick that you can do <laughs> when when things uh when things get awkward or uncomfortable. You don't always have to drill into it. You can just move on. Yeah, we women are really good at drilling into things, but I learned that trick a long time ago from my husband when he would change the subject quickly, and it never worked on me. And it finally dawned on me. He was doing it because it works so well on men. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of one of my favorites too. So, I was a, a little bit a little bit relieved to know that he was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Because then I know it's just my my issue and and it's something that's a little bit off with me. And I I figured out what the problem was. What's the problem? Well, I have been extremely busy these basically this past month. And so I was kind of going nonstop. I spent all of my time doing work-related things. And then straight from there, I would spend my time with Latin Lover. And I had no decompression for myself. I am a person who loves to be social and loves to be around people. But I also need a lot of alone time. And you get a bad case of the grumpies when you don't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get I grumpy and awkward and fidgety and I don't really it's it's not something that's super obvious to me what's going on until I stop and and think about you know, okay. Yeah, you haven't had a day alone in the last, you know, 2 weeks. Maybe it's time to just relax by yourself. You know, that's a very, very smart observation. I remember being single. When I was single, I was always worried about being alone. But it never dawned on me for the longest time that I actually enjoyed some downtime to myself. And it's extremely important, something that we do encourage women to do all the time. But we have to remind ourselves to do it as well, even in the context of a relationship. You date your friends, you date your men, you date yourself, you date your family but go back and always date yourself. That's really, truly important, especially for our women, our highly sensitive women out there who need a little extra decompression time. It's great to be dating all the time, to be excited about romance, but when you're doing it as just a substitution for loneliness, it's not actually quite as beneficial. You get what I mean by that, Steph? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, the the thing is, is, you can take this time to yourself and do whatever you want with it. You can watch TV if that's what you need to do. It's more about just kind of giving yourself some breathing room. But another thing to consider is if you are spending all of your time with one person, and this does not mean, I mean, yes, I encourage mantourage dating, absolutely. But even if you're in an exclusive relationship, you still need to spend time with other people, your friends and, you know, do things that are interesting that you can talk about. Because what also happens when you spend all of your time with one person is you guys run out of things to talk about. It gets kind of monotonous. And then you're like, oh, my God, I used to be such an interesting person. And now I have nothing to say. This is so awkward. I don't feel sexy or beautiful or amazing. And all I want you to do is tell me how wonderful I am. Maybe it's time to take some time (laughs) and, uh, you know, recalibrate where you're at. That's a great, a great way to put it. Recalibration. I think that's perfect. I do want to circle back to something you said earlier when you were talking to him. And I love the way that you just changed the subject because that is a great technique. But also what I love is that you didn't even though you thought something was wrong. You didn't keep drilling down on that when he didn't. You accepted him for what he said. You didn't keep going, are you sure? Are you sure? Because what happens as women is when we keep drilling down, eventually we can convince him that something's wrong when he never really in the first place thought that something was wrong. So you can 
tell him and end up telling him that you guys have a horrible relationship when he thinks things are really great between the two of you and he's always excited to see you and you can convince him that he shouldn't be. So be very That's careful very about constantly drilling down on a man. It doesn't mean you can't express how you feel, but really evaluate whether or not it's just coming from you and your assessment of things based on your perception of the world. Because when we're stressed out, we'll put it on our men as well. We'll perceive the world through a stress lens and then all of a sudden see tons of problems there that don't actually exist. And then you keep talking to him about it again and again and again. And eventually he's going to believe that you guys have a broken, horrible relationship when all he wanted to do was love, adore, and cherish you. So careful with your words, careful with your perception. It's okay to not over-communicate things, to take a step back and evaluate whether it's just coming from you and what's going on in your life. Yeah. And you know, it's it's also very, I I find it to be very helpful to own your feelings. You do not have to be happy all the fucking time. But- No, you don't. You also don't get to blame someone else for how you're feeling. If you can kind of own what's going on and share it from a place of vulnerability or wanting to just be honest with your partner, then that's great. There's nothing wrong with saying, I am having a hard time right now and I I can't even tell you why. Okay, single smart female, it's time for the final thought on today's show. Sometimes the best romance is about keeping it simple. You don't have to over communicate to be truly happy, lover girl. This is Jen. And this is Steph. Don't forget to subscribe to our show in iTunes. And if you'd like to submit a question to us, come see us at singlesmartfemale.com. And if you just want to come play around and learn more about mantourage dating, Come see us at havehimyourway.com. Talk to you next time.